So in this video, I'm gonna go through my savings journey so far. This video is part five of my property series. I'll leave a link in the description to the overall playlist in the previous parts as well. So at the start of July, I told you guys that the savings plan for myself is going to be quite ambitious. That is a savings plan. I understand it is very aggressive, but that is gonna be the, well, that has been the main focus of the majority of this year. I have basically stopped investing for the majority of this year. I invested quite a bit back in January and a bit a few months ago. I've just been saving very aggressively. I've been cutting costs and just looking at my spending, auditing it and making sure that I'm really putting in the right constraints to make sure that I can get there for my goal. So let's see how this aggressive plan is doing so far. Now, when I first created my savings plan back in late April, I wanted to really ease into it. So for me, the savings target was gonna be $3,000. I had just come home from a holiday back in April and the credit card bill was coming up. And of course, evidently the bill was quite hefty. So I wanted to really ease into it and start off a bit slow. Now at the end of May, a full month after my holiday, I counted up all my savings and the total came to be around $2,973 against a target of $3,000. Now, of course, I missed my target by about 20 something dollars, which isn't too bad to be honest. I think it's pretty close and I'm happy to just leave it there. Now, a few things which contributed to the shortfall was of course the holiday itself, but also the fact that I did have quite a few eating out days uh, when going into work, a lot of coffees and things like like that which of course added to the actual bill some other expenses came up as well like lump sum expenses like sports which i signed up for which of course added to the cost but overall i really can't complain moving on to june which is where things ramp up now this is where the real target began of four and a half thousand dollars this is where the real stuff started i just started my new job in the city which meant that traveling in was going to be expensive in terms of public transport costs and of course the food there the coffee there everything is a lot more expensive a couple of weeks in i ate out a couple times and i just realized that this is just not worth it there is not value for money here it is getting way too ridiculous i love eating out it's fun to do so but i can't be paying 20 30 40 percent more for the same things i would be paying in my previous job where i worked in western sydney where things were just a lot more cheaper now because of that i started to bring food from home and that helped quite a bit i still didn't stop my daily coffees though because five dollars here and there doesn't really make a big difference in the grand scheme of things but if i can cut back on big expenses like eating out 20 bucks 30 bucks here and there this will definitely help over time going into june i was quite confident with how this month was going and how it was gonna go until i got told that we're getting solar installed in our house this month now solar panels do require an upfront cost to get them installed for the actual panels themselves plus the labor that goes into it. And unless you're looking to finance it, you do have to pay up front, which is the part that we didn't go down, we didn't finance it, and we did pay up front. So my split for the solar panels was almost 5K, which meant that this month was off to an absolute shocker of a start. And the worst thing is the payment for the solar panels actually went out on the 1st of June, so literally the first day of the month, which meant that, um, yeah, this month is already off to a horrible start. Now, for some reason, I completely forgot about this cost. I knew this was coming, but for some reason it just didn't cross my mind until my dad reminded me and of course the payment had to come out so yeah thank you dad luckily though the one thing that went my way this month was the fact that i get paid fortnightly and that means that in most months of the year i'll be getting paid twice twice a month but this month was one of those special magical months where somehow three pay periods get lined up which means that i'll be getting paid three times this month so june i got paid three times which sort of helped to mitigate some of that massive expense of the solar panels so coming back to the actual numbers and looking at that month in hindsight i ended up saving about two thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars against a target of four and a half k which meant that i was at a shortfall of about one thousand six hundred and seventy eight dollars which is quite insane now at this point i am feeling quite a bit disappointed because this is not a small difference it is quite massive but also the fact that solar panels was just something which was going to come i didn't account for it and um, yeah you can't really do much about that it is a one-off expense it's not going to be an ongoing expense moving forward and also the fact that i'll be saving money in this house when it comes to electricity which should pay itself off over time so overall it should be beneficial moving on to the current month which is july the target for this month is once again four and a half k i'm going to stick with this ambitious target and just keep going at it i did have a thought about setting a more ambitious target for this month to make up for the shortcomings of last month but i decided not to because that would just be stretching myself 
way too thin. Yes, I understand that this property goal is very important for me to keep on continuing with my investment journey because I haven't invested in the stock market for quite some time now and the money is just sitting in the savings. So I really need to get a move on, but also the fact that I don't want to stretch myself out too thin. I want to also enjoy the day to day and I don't spend too crazily anyway. So it doesn't really make sense to cut back even more just to make up for last month. So about halfway through this month, things were going quite well. I was feeling pretty confident, but once again, I got hit with another bombshell, which once again, I should have seen coming, but I somehow didn't. Now, of course, as you guys may know, I am living with parents, which means that I do contribute to a huge chunk of or a decent chunk of expenses for the household. And it was time to now pay my dues and pay for the expenses. So because of that, there goes a couple grand once again from my savings. And again, I have suffered a setback. But luckily though, only a couple days later, I did get paid about $2,700 in dividends coming through from various ETFs that I own, which definitely helped to offset a lot of that cost. So yeah, so far it's been a pretty roller coaster of a month, obviously paying that huge expense and then you know recouping some of it from the dividends and so on and so on. So yeah, it's been a pretty up and down month. Now, as I'm recording this video, it is the 23rd of July, which means there is just over a week left in the month. And luckily enough, I have got one more pay period left at the end of this month, which would mean that I will try to hopefully get close enough to my goal. Before filming this video, I went through all my bank accounts and basically recorded all the savings that I've got so far added it up and I am so far away from my actual target, it is not even funny. I think I'm sitting at somewhere around 1500 bucks against a target of four and a half K, which is just so far out. It is over $3,000 away from the actual goal. It seems like every single month, things seem to just come up, which I should know about and I should account for, but for some reason, they just don't cross my mind and I just seem to forget about them. I'm really, really hoping that August is gonna be an insane month on the saving side of things. I'm really hoping that this can happen, but looking at my luck so far for the past couple of months, um, I can only really hope for the best. Moving forward, I'm gonna stick with four and a half K per month as the benchmark and see how I do. Looking at my savings across all of my accounts, it is sitting at about 45K and I do need it to be at 53K so I can go for the purchase of 400k. I'll keep you guys updated. This video was part five. You can check out the previous parts in the description and the whole playlist as well. I'll see you guys in part six. Bye now.